This is Ryan Elliott for Boxing Social in association with Betfred. It's been a while, but I'm delighted to be joined by Austin Amo Williams. Amo, welcome back to the UK. How are you, my friend? Good, good, man. I feel great. I feel happy. I'm ready to put on the show for my UK fans. At the O2 I fought, it wasn't much people there, you know, but this one is going to be a packed out, it's a sold out arena. Let's go get this W. I'm going to put on a great show for my UK fans. As you mentioned, you fought over here before, but it was quite early in the night. But just the feeling of the fight week in the UK, being around the fans and the people, how do you find it compared to fighting in the USA? Oh, man, I, f I find it, I got to say, I get love everywhere. I get a lot of love in the United States, as you've seen in Miami. And I get a, lo a lot of love here. Um, it's, it's just a different experience overall, be being more you know, seasoned as a professional fighter, more known than I was, you know, even when I came in the 02. You know, now people are really looking forward to seeing me. I'm, I'm an attraction on the card. Um, so it just makes me excited to, it, it's the same thing. It's, it's exciting across the board, I gotta say. It's a fast start to the year for you, being out on a bill like this, building that UK profile. You had some time away from the ring. You were back out on the Haney card at the end of the year. So just to go back to that, back with the second round TKO, back yeah. on everyone's radars, that must've been a, a nice bit of relief to get back. Dude, you, you nailed it with what you said, a relief. You know, it was a lot of stuff I was coming back from. I was fighting in front of Eddie, fighting in front of my management team. A lot of people invested a lot of money into me. So I had a lot of pressures on me that was kind of outside of the ring. But as all fighters know, once you get that knockout out the way of that return fight, you break that ice. And then, I, I mean, this is two months. I'm, I'm back in two months. You get that ball rolling again. You get the momentum. Uh, now I can have fun in the ring. Y'all can see that fun ammo again. You know what I'm saying? And interesting you talk about having fun and, and really enjoying it. Everyone has their demons and go through certain things. In your dark times, how much did getting back in the gym and getting back on trap help you mentally? Oh, boxing kept me afloat. And that's real. That's the best way I can say it. Boxing kept me afloat. Going to the gym with my guy, Eric Woods, he over there, we was in Arizona together. Um, we spent a lot of time together. I got a new lifelong friend and family member in him. Uh, boxing was the thing that, you know, it's my passion. It's what I love to do. This really ain't a job for me. This is my passion. So, you know, being able to look for it through that, it pulled me through the dark time I was having. My team, my promotional company, my management company, they had my back. So I built even more respect and rapport with them and uh yeah boxing was a key for me man it was a key now you're back and, and you're on the trail you know second fight in two months out here in the uk you've made it clear you don't want to mess around you want to be taking these fights i heard that the jess smith fight was was maybe an option what happened there jess smith we were actually preparing for jess smith for about a month um it was a great fight first i had aaron coley um, what's his name? Uh, Jesse Vargas got COVID. That February 5th car got moved around a little bit. They asked if I wanted to come to the UK and fight. I said, of course. You know, so then they got Jess Smith about a month out. Uh, I was like, it's perfect. He got some good time to prepare. I got great time to prepare. He's a fighter. I, I love his style. You know, I think he's better than his uh, record. Like I said, an oppressor. I think he's a lot better than his record, and uh, getting a knockout over him, you know, would just be a major statement. But um, respect to him. I wish him a speedy recovery. Uh, he is a warrior, and uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it just fell out. He had an injury. Happens all the time. I got respect for him. Would love to fight him one day. In terms of the opponent you've got in place now, how much have you seen of him? What kind of a fight can we expect on Saturday? Oh, uh, he's the perfect opponent, actually. Um, not to just say that I'm going to just blaze through him like he's nothing. He's very tough. He's extremely tough. He's Argentinian. Uh, my two sparring partners actually are Argentinian. They know him as well. They know he's very tough, rugged, hard nose, hard to knock out, and he's going to come to fight. Uh, the thing that I'm going to show is that I'm a real fighter. I'm going to come to fight too. A lot of the fighters I see him fight like prospects and stuff, they try to fight a, like, a, a nice style, you know, trying to score points, making sure he, they don't touch him, they stay out of range from him, stuff like that. Not Ammo. Ammo coming with the same war he want to bring, I'm going to bring it times three, times four. So I'm excited to show the, you know, the world that I can even blast out a guy like that who's, whose whole profile is built on toughness and going to war and stuff like that. All being well on Saturday night, what's the plan for this year? I'm sure activity is the first tick box, but what do you want out of 2022? What I want out of 2022 is I want my first couple of titles. 
I won my first title, and I won my first title defense. Uh, we moved some stuff around with Matchroom on the business side where I'm about to start only fighting 10-round fights, no more eights. Um, so, you know, they're going to want to make it worth it. I know they're going to give me some belt or something to go towards. I want to give me a belt, give me a title, start building these accolades, and see how it feels to defend something. I don't, I don't have that experience yet of defending a title. Um, I know that's a whole different world in, in, in the sport of boxing because people have more motivation to fight you, much more, you know, things to take from you. So that's what I'm excited for, man. That's what I'm looking for, at least a title and a title defense. One notable addition to middleweight, uh, your old mate Anthony Fowler has moved up to 160 pounds. Uh, we know the history. Do you think one day that fight will happen? I think that fight is becoming very sensible. Um, before, when we first started calling each other out, it was a fantasy. People were kind of projecting what they wanted to see from Ammo Williams, and he had the experience at the time where they knew what they would see from Anthony Fowler. Now, as I progress through my career, you know, I'm getting better. I continue to knock these guys out. I continue to, you know, develop as a fighter, and uh, ranking-wise and stuff like that, we're getting very close to one another. So it's a fight that makes sense. Um, it's no longer so much emotion involved in it I just really start I'm starting to look at it and see it as a really good fight for me you know it's a perfect fight for me to take and uh, he's at 160 now that I make sense he's with Eddie I'm with Eddie I see it happening got to ask you about the main event Daniel Jacobs I'm sure someone you've got a great deal of admiration for coming over here and fighting John Ryder what do you make of the fight who do you give the edge to I give the edge to Daniel Jacobs uh He's so much, he got so much extensive experience as an amateur and as a pro. And uh, as he said, his last performance wasn't the best, but it's hard for any fighter to fight in an empty crowd, anybody. It's hard. It's, it's, no, it's like a sparring session. It's hard to get yourself fight, fight motivated for something like that. So I'm excited to see what he does with this new energy that he's had. I think it was a beautiful move for him to come out here to the U.K. and fight in front of these extremely explosive UK fans, you know, and, and get the energy, we have to pull the energy from the crowd, whether it's for him or against him. Um, and I think it's, a, I think, I think Jacobs is going to have a performance that might put him back in the limelight a bit. Um, it's so much moving around going on from 154 to 168. I think he still has a shot at getting something big. So. Is there a bit of you that's going to be watching that main event after your fight on Saturday and seeing Daniel Jacobs come over in a big fight in front of the passionate crowd and thinking, this could be me in a couple of years headlining one of these? Definitely. Definitely. I'm even, to be honest with you, I'm looking at the cash fight with, uh, what's the other guy's name? Mariel. I'm looking at that fight as a fight that's like going to be coming soon. You know what I'm saying? Like, really. So I'm looking at both of these fights uh, in different different aspects Daniel Jacobs I don't think I ever fight him just re if I'm being realistic but Cash and, and, and Matty L I think that's some that's two people that are I'm highly highly likely to be uh, um, matched with so I'm looking at them in a light like kind of filling out my competition to come Amo it's been a pleasure to catch up with you once again best luck on Saturday enjoy the the UK fight week and we'll catch you very soon Shout out to all my UK fans. Shout out to all my UK fans. Shout out to everybody who didn't have my back through everything. Uh, we ready to go. We ready to take off. Shout out to y'all.